you know, because now Puffy's being dragged into the situation. Yeah, yeah, he going a lot. Be, yeah. Fifty Cent has been on stage. Yeah, Fifty on it hard. Fifty Cent is going overboard. Yeah. Um, there was an interview where Mo Preem actually said that Puffy called him and denied any involvement. Yeah, in the I whole saw that. Tupac murder, mm-hmm. which you know, of course, Puffy's going to do. Yeah, I mean, and people have asked me. I was on the Breakfast Club the other day. They're like, you know, do you think that Puffy's going to get arrested? I see it as a virtually zero percent chance. Okay, because at the end of the day. And we've talked about this. Yes, we did. The story that Keefe said was that Puffy called him after the murder and said, mm-hmm. was that us? And he, they said yes. And Puffy allegedly sent him a million dollars. They sent it to Eric Von Zip. Mm-hmm. And the story was that Eric Von Zip kept the money. Right. I'd heard he bought a nightclub. Right, he did. He did buy yeah, a nightclub. He did. <laughs> <laughs> so that part's true. Yeah, yeah. Because zip code. Zip code. <laughs> <laughs> It's called Zip Code. Yep. Where was it? Um, in Harlem. In Harlem! <laughs> Puffy's hometown. Yeah, he had Harlem. He had, well, well, not um, Puffy's dad's hometown. Yeah, he had a place up in the Bronx, another club in the Bronx. But Zip always had money, you know? Zip always had money. Like, Yo, did so I ever tell you the kid. story about um, what Mike Tyson told me about Zip? No, go ahead. I'm listening. You want to hear a story about Zip? So one day, Dawn comes and tries this shit with me, put me in around six hundred thousand dollars in in a bag, and you know, believe it or not, six hundred thousand dollars heavy. I know you guys think if he told you guys grabbing bags like um Tony Montana coming in there, they're not grabbing bags like that. You know what I mean? Like a that might be that might be twelve eleven pounds. A million bucks is probably like 75 pounds. So mm. It's not something you can run around and run the block with, you know what I mean? So um, it was um, it was crazy when we had all that money, you know? And so, well, we were talking about Don, huh? Yeah. So um, I don't know if I should even say this shit. But um, no, fuck it. Go ahead. <laughs> Ask another question. Fuck it, Zip took Zip took like six tip, took the six hundred thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. From who? From Dom, and he came in with the money. He's trying to do something, and then Zip said, "Zip, Zip said, let's come, let's come back later, and we'll talk yeah. about that." He's walked him out the door. He said, "Hey man, let me get some of that money to pay some people. I got to pay some people." <laughs> WBC, the dog, the dog, come back. He's come back. He's come back. And Zip, you never met Zip, have you? I haven't. No. Zip is such a gentleman. Don, please come back. Zip. Not right now. Now he's, he's just not feeling well. Dog, click, click, bye. And then we're thinking about it like, wow, we gotta have a party. Let's get some bitches. Let's get everything. We gotta do it tonight. That's seven hundred thousand dollars right there. And then when I did Mike's interview, Mike talked about how um, he hung out with Mr. King afterwards, and they was just trying to put a fight together. And all he's with his sister Jackie, and shout out to Jackie, love you. And um, he changed his mind in the back seat of the car, started kicking the seat. And started whooping Don King's ass. Yeah, he and, told me about that. Yeah, and left on the side of the freeway, and it was insane. Oh yeah, no, he told the whole story. We'll, yeah, we'll actually run the story. He was chasing him around the yeah, car. Yeah. And, well, because it was like I guess what had happened was he had a flashback. Mike, Mike was going broke at that time, mm-hmm. and he was on Don King's private plane. Right, and he was sitting on this plane, going like, "This motherfucker made all this money off me. I ain't got shit." And then they jumped in like the Rolls Royce. I right. fucking got a Rolls Royce. <laughs> this is all my money. And mm-hmm. then he's, he's getting more and more mad. And then he right. just jumped out and beat him up and chased him around the car and everything else like that. Because Mike, you know, what was interesting is I interviewed um, Alan Dershowitz. Mm-hmm. He was Mike Tyson's lawyer. To He represented him in his appeal. He was a tax, a tax attorney. No, no, no. Alan Dershowitz, no, no, he wasn't a tax oh, attorney. Okay, okay, I got no, no, the no. word. Yeah. Alan Dershowitz represented Trump. He represented OJ. Okay, he now re- I know you're talking about. Yeah, he, old Jewish guy. Yeah, now you're he, talking he, about. He represented, um, right, so Alan Dershowitz represented uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Okay. He represented a lot of big names. I mean, down to like Mandela mm-hmm. <laughs> and so forth. And he represented Mike. Because Mike was already in prison for the rape charges, right. but he was working on his appeal. Okay. And he said, while Tyson was in jail, he ran out of money. And Dershowitz said, that's okay, I'll still represent you. You know, because he's like, if my client that. runs out of money, it's okay. I'm not just going to bail on him. So he finished off the job. Ultimately, they didn't win the appeal. And he said, well, Mike got out. After his first fight, he called up Allen and he paid him. Well, I guess Mike Tyson actually ran out of money. 
Uh, I continued wild. to defend him without money. Um, I continued to defend him. He paid me some money, and then he couldn't pay. But I have to tell you about Mike. The day he fought his first fight after he left prison, he paid me and all the other lawyers, even some who didn't continue with him. I continued with him because I never drop a case. Because my client runs out of money, I feel that I have an ethical obligation to continue the case as long as the client can't afford it. The client refuses to pay. That's one thing. But if he, can, if he can't afford it, I, 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 I continue on the case. I've done that in numerous cases. Great. But the thing of that story that kind of shocks me was that Mike Tyson had made hundreds of millions of dollars to go totally broke in prison. I agree. Is insane. Here's my take on it, because we all hung out together. Me and Mike have been great friends. When Mike was with the first guys, you know, and they kept him fighting all the time. He stayed fighting. They kept him busy. And I hate that when he got with Don King and a few other people, we all used to be hanging out on La Cienica Boulevard. I forgot our guys they ain't owned a, a beeper shop. Hmm. And Mike is such an amazing person. Like, he'll spend hundreds of thousands on you. I yeah. never, even though I hung with him and we hung out, never asked him for a dime. Right. Never let him buy me anything. Yeah. We would just enjoy each other. Yeah. It, like, that's how close we were. My brother got murdered. Oh. Mike was the first person to call me. He called me and asked me, was I okay? That's how far we go back up. I know Mike... Right after he won the heavyweight championship of the world. Okay. We'd go that far back for it. Yeah. He met all these other people. And I saw the decline when he got with Don King and all of them. Like they really, yeah. they really drained him. And I watched it from afar. The parties, yeah. the hanging out, the drugs. So now, fast forward, come back to Zip. Me, Zip, and Mike Tyson's at the MGM in Vegas. Huh. We all saying I was talking, the TK we hanging. So now we're walking in. I'm thinking we're going somewhere special. So we're walking through. Mike got the bodyguards, but everybody's knowing TK. I'm famous now. So I'm acting like the bodyguard, my bodyguards. <laughs> we walk from the beginning of ballet all the way through the MGM, all the way past the fight state, the, the ring, outside the car, me and Zip and Mike. We go sit in the car just so Mike can smoke a blunt. And I thought that was the funniest shit in the world. Like, yo, we walked all the way from, I'm thinking we're going somewhere, to, like on some business stuff. He we walked all the way there. Yeah. And it was <laughs> great. But if Mike, if you're watching this, I want to um, say my friendship with you has been amazing over the years because I've known him since he was a kid. Yeah. Doing when we, me, him, Teddy Riley, and all of his hangout. Oh, okay. I was with Mike when he bought his first million dollar ankle bracelet. <laughs> that he wore on his ankle. You know, most people buy bracelets, yeah. watches. How big were those diamonds? Man, this is well, like, like five carats it. on each joint. Like. Yeah, he bought it, a million dollar ankle bracelet, and wore it on his ankle. 